All right, good evening, everyone. It has been quite a long time since uh, I haven't done a live webinar. It seems like forever, like literally a few months though. <laughs> good evening, everyone. Can I please have a quick sound check? Let me know if you guys can hear me. Type a one in the chat box, a chat chat box right now below if you can hear me. And also if you can uh, hear the screen, uh, hear the uh, hear the voice and see the screen. <laughs> All right, it has been a long day and a long week. <laughs> I mean, isn't it crazy to have like a holiday in the middle of the week? Like at least link it so we are off like a couple of days or something. But isn't it crazy? Like you get Wednesday off and then Thursday you're back to work? Like, no. <laughs> All right, so good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's presentation. All right, so uh, as you guys can see, work less, live more, and grow richer. It's real, and this is what we're going to be talking about, how you, too, can achieve this kind of freedom. And this by supercharging your trading just one hour a day. This is basically what I do. Excuse me, I just feel like sneezing. Okay, so this is what I do every single day. I basically trade the power hour. Have I always been trading the power hour? No, <laughs> okay. I actually have been trading the whole entire day. FOMC meetings. I've been trading through option expiration. I've been trading through quadruple witching option expiration. I have been trading through holidays. Was it worth it? Nope, it's not. I'm gonna show you some tricks tonight where you could actually trade less and actually earn more. So let's get right into it. You can see me right here. My name is Anka Metcalf, and I'm the CEO and founder of TradeOutLoud.com, which is a trading education uh, that firm that is uh, um, specialized in educating individuals how to day trade, swing trade, and invest in the market, whether it's the stock market, futures market, whether it's in crypto, whatever your vehicle of preference is. The strategy is the same, whether you're day trading or swing trading or investing, you're not going to reinvent the wheel. Basically, what we teach you is a set of rules and a system that will enable you to trade all the markets any time of the day on any time frame. I'm a professional independent trader. I have been doing this for 20 something years. And I have also, I also come with the financial background. I have been in in investment banking for over 10 years before I transitioned into uh, day trading, swing trading and investing on my own. I have been swing trading and investing for a really long time, for almost like 30 plus years. Uh, but I wanted to make my money work for me. I wanted to generate income. I saw the potential because I was working at investment funds. I was working with hedge funds. And I saw the possibility and I saw much more than meets the eye. So that's why I was very attracted to this field. And I was like, I want to make it on my own. So I'm going to share with you how I got here and what clicked and when it clicked. All right. I do run two programs. One program, the first program that um, we actually created uh, was the Stock Swing Trader. And the stock swing trader has been around for many, many years. In fact, since the inception of Trade Out Loud back in 2010, yeah, that's right. We've been going strong on 14 plus years. That's really a record to be in this business and to be uh, the number one source for trading education, especially for futures, for swing trading and for investing. Uh, I also run a trading room for futures. I have added this because a uh, couple of years before 2017, uh, my accountant suggested to make some changes uh, and uh, she suggested looking into futures, day trading futures versus day trading stocks because of tax purposes. And I'm like, oh, I really don't know. I am I really have this thing going. Like, I don't want to switch anything. I'm making money. I'm very happy. I'm, uh, you know, definitely, you know, in a position where I really don't want to do anything. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Paul. Yes, it is recorded. <laughs> All right, so um, basically it's like, I didn't want to make the change, but then, you know, like a couple of weeks later, it didn't happen, you know, just 
overnight. So a couple of weeks later, I just give it some thought and I'm like, what is the number one common denominator when you, when you day trade? Does anybody know what is the common, what is the one common denominator? I'm, I'm just going to take this uh, screen out. Let me see if I could do it. I don't know. Stop. Stop share. Okay. So we could have this conversation. So what is the one thing and one common denominator? That's the market, right? The market. So when you trade stocks, what do you do? You were basically trying to find relative strong stocks or relative weak stocks in comparison to the market. So therefore, if you're having a market, for example, the Qs or the spies, and if they're weak, and if they're downtrending, you're trying to find stocks that are underperforming the major indices. So I'm just giving this example right now. Let's say we have a stock and that stock is NVIDIA, let's say, right? So if NVIDIA is weaker than the Qs, then it's a no-brainer that you have to wait for a setup to shore NVIDIA. At the same time, if NVIDIA is powerful and NVIDIA is making new highs, and if the Qs are strong, but NVIDIA is stronger because it's already extending, for example, into new all-time highs, and it's already it already has massive projections above, then what do you do? You're going to wait for a pullback and buy NVIDIA. Right. So the reason why I chose this example is because the bottom line is that we are using the cues and the spy diamonds as well. And we're using Russell's as major indicators. Right. Because they're creating the market pulse and whatever we trade has to be not in sync with those major indices, but definitely has to be an analysis that will help us choose the right index. Because for example, if financials are weak, if we have a weak energy sector, what is gonna happen with the spice? The spice is gonna try to go down. It, on the other side, if we have more participation in the tech stocks, more participation, let's say in semiconductors or whatever, you're going to see a growth and you're going to see price advancement in the queues. So they're not the same. The Qs and the spies, they're not the same. Sometimes you may have uh, market participation in sync where they're all moving at the same pace. And sometimes you're not going to get that. Sometimes you're going to get like spies higher, Qs lower, or the other way around. So I thought about it and I said, you know what? Like before I start the trading day, I compile my hot list. So I form my hot list and I put on the hot list, let's say all the gappers. Then I have another hot list where I put on all my super trends, right? So for a continuation place. So that was for the stock market. In the stock market, you have a lot more work to do pre-market and definitely after the market closes than in the futures market. So there's a little bit more work. And then I thought about it and I said, well, wait a minute. Well, what my CPA was actually uh, suggesting was basically to look at NASDAQ, to look at S&P futures, right? NASDAQ being futures, NASDAQ, S&P uh, futures, so, right? Uh, and also the Dow and Russell futures. So I'm like, yeah, well, you know what? I'm, I'm doing the analysis for these indices every single day. And I have been doing it for tens of years, two decades, right? So because I have been doing this for so long and I'm like, this is a no brainer. So it means that I would be basically trading the cues and the spies, right? And I will, instead of trading just the cues and the spies, that would be trading NASDAQ and I would be trading the S&P. Okay. So I gave it a shot and I took these trades and I have an example here for you as well as we're going through the presentation. And guess what? And I'm like, oh my God, this is it. So no analysis, no, you know, kind of like mumbo jumbo, hot list or whatever. So I, I used to have like 10 to 15 stocks on my gaffers list. And I used to have trend continuation. That is another list. And I used to have weak stocks. That was another list. So I would have like 50 to 60 stocks on our watch list at least. Well, now I don't have to do that watch list anymore. Okay. So that's super, super cool. 
All right, so let's get back to our presentation. All right, so basically this is how I came into the futures market, right? So I came into the futures market and then everybody would hear me say, hey, I pulled some profits, I'm done for the day because I would be trading the power hour, right? When I was trading stocks, when I, when I first started day trading, guess what? I would sit in front of the computer all day. And not only that, but really long hours because I would start around 7.30 a.m. and I would end the day 7 or 8 p.m. And that is because I did a lot of research. I did a lot of analysis and all my charts. I used to print them on a piece of paper and I used to, you know, kind of like see what mistakes I made, where my entry, you know, where I had my entry, where I had my stop and where I should have been, uh, had my entry and where I should have exited, right? So it was just a battle, right? So anyways, I'm like, ah, oh, you know what? I would just simplify everything. So sooner, the, the, the sooner you realize that there's a huge difference and the sooner you realize that you can make really small changes that are going to impact your life, this is going to be fantastic. Okay, sorry about that. All right. So are you worried about inflation? I'm worried about inflation. Of course, everybody's worried about inflation because inflation cut through our profits, right? If I would go with, for example, $200 at the supermarket to buy whatever uh, things I needed, you know, let, let's say you, you wanted, you know, to host a party, right? You would find out that now when you want to host a party is a minimum, minimum of five to $600. Like it's crazy. Like only if you want to do like, you know, like a small gathering, like 10 people or something, it is crazy. So everything is so much more expensive and depending on what you want to serve, right? So definitely inflation is cutting through our bottom line is cutting through our profits. It's cutting off our creme de la creme, right? So we, a lot of people don't even, you know, people live from paycheck, through pay, uh, paycheck from paycheck to paycheck. And this is a well-known fact, right? They're, they're living paycheck through paycheck. Uh, how about, you know, trying to do something to help people realize that there's something else that they need to do. And here's the thing, people, and there was this research that was done, uh, I think it was in 2021 or 2022, and because of this inflation, people that had an extra, let's say, gig going on, uh, an extra something on the side that they could do, whether it's Uber driving or becoming a simple affiliate, right? And this is something that uh, we want to uh, implement ASAP with Trade Out Loud. So you talk about trade out loud, you get paid, okay? So this is something that is going to help people, help people discover us and therefore improve their lives, okay? So if you're worried about inflation, you're not alone because inflation is something that is here and it's going to stick and I don't think it's going to go anywhere um, anytime soon. So things are going to get pretty choppy and pretty dicey, especially as we're getting into closer and closer to uh, to election. So my goal for you is to understand the process and to understand the process of generating more income, generating sub or simply supplementing your income. Because if you understand the process, what's involved Maybe you're not going to be so intimidated about the market. Maybe you're not going to be intimidated for anything. Trading is the best side business that you can have, especially now that you have access at, you know, to capital. For example, for those uh, traders that don't have capital, it, this is a no-brainer. I mean, there are companies out there that are waiting to pay you because their ultimate, their ultimate goal is that you make money so they make their share. Okay, so let me tell you in just a brief, just just very briefly how I get how I got started. I was working at an investment firm. I have been in banking, I've worked at an investment firm at a hedge, excuse me, at a hedge fund. And here's how I started. I saw the power of money. I loved the money concept and I saw the potential that we have with kind of like working with money. Uh, I have invested in my education. So I first of all, I wanted to know what day trading is all about, what swing trading is all about, even though I had been swing trading 
way long before I got into day trading and have been investing. But I wanted to keep myself up to date because I was playing it by a macro level, by a level that that big financial institutions usually taught the people that were working there, their employees to, tr to let's say, to trade or to invest. It was value investing. And that meant like holding a stock for generational wealth or holding a stock into your retirement, right? So basically I wanted to invest in education because I wanted to know exactly what it involves. It's the same thing that you guys are doing right now. So you are coming here because you wanna understand what's this all about? Is this for me? Can I get started? What's involved? After that, I had to quit my job. So I quit my job. I'm like, this is it. I'm quitting my job, but I did not quit my job a, I, right away because I needed to have a specific amount of money that I can potentially trade with. And not only that, but I needed an emergency fund. So what I did, I didn't, I literally didn't have a lot of money, right? I didn't have a lot of money, but what I did is I took out all my savings and literally my 401k, everything that I had, okay? And what I what I did is I routed it into a brokerage account, into a retail account. So I put all that money that I had there into a trading account. But I took six months out for emergency, right? Like bare minimum emergency, just to pay the bills, the mortgage, everything else. So I definitely needed to make it in six months. And in my mind, I was like, okay, so if I cannot make it in six months, you know what? I'm just going to go back and get the job back. Or if it's not going to be at this firm, it's going to be another invest in for investing firm, right? I mean, you could get your job, you could find another job, right? All right, so for me, it was a win-win situation. And so there was no going back. So I quit my job. I got into day trading after I received my education. So first education, then I quit my job. Then I had my emergency fund. I allocated all my money that I had into a day trading account. And it was not a lot of money. I had about $59,000 into it. I'm telling you, I didn't start with a lot of money. So I started day trading in 2003. So I liquidated literally everything. I had some stocks that are long-term and literally they, I didn't want to dab into that account, but that is like, literally I'm not even touching that. So I started day trading in 2003. I started making money three months later. So when I started trading, guess what? I started trading stocks with very low risk. In fact, with very small position, because if you know how to trade with a hundred dollar risk, you know how to trade with a thousand dollar risk or $10,000 risk. And I was a newbie. Remember, I used to work with hedge funds. I used to work in the uh, banking industry. I worked in uh, investing. So it was not rocket science for me to get back into trading and trade my own accounts. So I have to say that I started making money three short months later. So what that mean, what that meant for me is that I have automatically increased my size. I proved to myself that I make little profits and guys, I want at one point when I like, let's say my first week of trading, I traded very small. I actually traded 10 shares, six shares, maybe a hundred shares, depending on the stock, but I wouldn't go. So I would position size for that. So I wouldn't trade big. I just needed to know that the system that I'm applying is the correct system and that I'm capable of making money on my own, but I would never be able to do this without literally quitting my job. Um, another way to do this, and this is actually a really good friend of mine that got into this as well, but years later, so he took two months, no pay to prove that he could trade. And he's trading full-time right now. Full-time meaning he's swing trading mostly, but anyways, and investing. Uh, so the only thing that, uh, 
I would say made me succeed was understanding the power of R. The R is your risk level, okay? And we're gonna talk about that later. So I started generating income and um, at about like six months, the income that I'm talking about is basically income that I was able to pay the bills with. So I started out and then six months later, I could collect the paycheck, okay? I would collect the paycheck. Yeah, we, we could talk about algos. We I love algos. And the method that we're trading is basically the high velocity that embraces the algo action. And we're gonna talk about that in this presentation. When my account grew, so after about six months, I increased my risk, my R. So instead of risking $100, right, on a trade, I was risking now $500. I know it's not a big deal, but for me it was, okay? So uh, it, everybody has its own comfort level and risk tolerance, and, but that's how I started, okay? You start small and then you grow. So I, I was very fortunate to have amazing mentors and I'm really fortunate to share this information with you guys and especially that I've had two mentors that are not teaching so they're really uh, you know over time we're really good friends they were an acquaintance and of acquaintance uh that worked on Wall Street Goldman Sachs that they I was mentored by them so it was an incredible experience uh and this is as close as you could get to an institutional trader because I'm basically telling everybody in my courses and my webinars in my trading room everything that I was taught there's literally no secrets that I'm leaving behind because when I trade live with everybody in my trading room, I'm basically trading my accounts at the same time. So I'm telling everybody, hey, I'm going to get in here. There are several setups amongst which I'm only getting this one because this one is the one that I like, right? All right. So here's one thing. Uh, when I was trading from 2003 to 2008, when the financial, uh, financial, cr uh, financial crisis started, I was in a really good position because I was on my own. I was an indep independent trader and I was making my own money and everything around me was crashing, was falling down. Every, everybody was freaked out. I had friends that pulled out their 401ks. I mean, literally, they pulled out their 401ks close as November, December, January, uh, November, December of 2008 and 2009. Like I said, I didn't have a lot of money, but... I made enough money to actually divert into a swing account and into an investing, to my current investing account. So whatever I was making through day trading, and when you have a really good method, you're actually cashing in on your knowledge. So you're making money. It's not like, oh, I got to start. Is this method going to work? Is this going, is this the perfect time to trade? What time frame should I trade? No, you know everything. All you have to do is apply it. And the better you apply it, the better you're going to become at trading. So I opened back my investing account because my, basically my swing slash investing account because I wiped it out. Remember, I took all my 401k and all my savings. I didn't have anything. And now it was time for me to put it back. So I had about $40,000 that I made extra from, you know, and after paying my bills and doing all that, and that is from 2003 when I started trading to 2009. So I grew my account in a very conservative way. Guess what? What put me out there and what I've realized without literally ever, ever imagining in my whole entire life that I would be capable of something like this because I had my own time of research. When you don't have a time and trading is your job, trading is your pleasure. I am obsessed with trading. I'm obsessed with charts and I love what I do. What I, what I do. So in 2009, that's when I made my first million. I, I wasn't a millionaire. And by the way, for those of you that don't know my story, I don't know, the guys in my training, everybody in my training room knows my story, but I'm an immigrant and came here to the United States in 2002. So if I can make it, oh my goodness, you can make it as well. I mean, for sure. So anyways, in January of 2009, 
I bought $20,000 worth of Sirius Satellite. Remember, the market was crashing. There was no competition for Sirius Satellite back in 2009. Zero. I bought the stock at 15 cents a share. And I was loaded in shares. I had so many shares of it because it was 15 cents. And guess what? I went all in and I bought $20,000 worth of the stock. I think it was like 1,000, it was like 130,000 shares or something like that. And I sold it in 2018 as soon as it hit 1 million bucks. My first million was made in 2000 from, from trading alone, from swing trading alone. That was the first year that I hit a million dollars. That was my first year when I hit a million with that. And since then, I started to contribute to my swing trading account. So guys, it's so doable. And by the way, you don't need a financial crisis in order to start trading. You don't need to have some kind of catastrophic event for the market to plunge. No, you could get little by little by little by little by little. And therefore, financial freedom is here. Now, I could tell you one thing. You could trade so much better when you have a cushion, when you know that your money is working for you. That is the secret. Nev whatever money you have on the side, whatever amount that you have that you don't need, stop spending it on, I don't know, I know, I'm a woman, purses or um, shoes or, uh, you know, dresses or whatever. Think twice about it. Because if you start being very responsible with your money and start putting it towards your day trading account, Think about the fact that, hey, you want a Chanel bag. You, I get it. I want one too. But do you think that I bought a Chanel bag in 2009? No, I could care less. I wanted to make a freaking living, okay? So income trading means, it, 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 day trading is basically income trading. You're generating the income. That is the engine. That is the engine that brings you money in. So that is key. You need to keep that going. If you have day trading as, for example, um, as a supplement, your income type of business, that's fine too. Uh, for example, if you're working, you know, a, a different shift and you can be here in the, um, in the morning or in the afternoon or even at night, you can trade at night. For example, I'm looking at the time now. Uh, because setups are happening overnight as well. You don't have to sit in front of the computer all day. So income trading is day trading. Day trading is basically you're buying something, you're buying a commodity, you're buying a, uh, you're buying, um, I don't know, um, an index, you're buying bonds now, and you're selling it minutes later or hours later, depending on the time frame that you're trading. I call that instant gratification, Okay. Because I love to get in and out within the same day. Not only that, but I'm in and out within minutes. Okay, well, depending on the market, sometimes I could stay there for about an hour. It has happened. So it happens. The market is different every single day. And this is how you literally can trade your way uh, to your financial freedom. Uh. There you, yes, you can invest in real estate as well. You can invest exactly in real estate and you can rent it out, right? So when you start having money, yeah, why not? If you have like a hundred grand, why not? Put a down payment on your house, buy a house, right? And then rent it out or Airbnb. There are so many ways in which, but you need to have the money. All right. So I'm going to ask you guys and I want your answers right here. Is trading risky? Is trading risky? Type a type a one for yes and type a number two for no. Yes or no? Is trading risky? Okay. All right. It's a trick question. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh my gosh, Steven, thank you. <laughs> Steven got it. <laughs> Dennis, you got it. Okay. Guys, trading is 
risky if you don't know what you're doing, just like Dennis says, or better yet, Stephen said, if you don't understand your risk. Oh my God, and we're here to talk about that risk. But let me tell you something. Drinking a glass of water is risky. <gasps> what if I choke? I could die. Crossing the street is risky. There, a car can hit you. Am I right? Swimming is risky. What if you drown, right? So there are multiple levels of risk. But what if I told you that if you take a calculated risk, trading is not risky if you know what you're doing, just like Dennis said, right? So understanding the calculator risk. Guys, if there's one thing that you need to remember from today's presentation, this is the slide right here. Okay, so pay attention. You need to determine your risk tolerance. Okay, how much, how much risk can you take without sweating? All right, how much, how much... <laughs> Absolutely. Trading is a business. The moment you don't treat it as a business, it's gone. Okay. That's how you blow up your account. It's not a casino, right? So you have to determine what's comfortable for you. There are traders out there that are trading uh, exactly, exactly. You can lose your money if you don't know how to trade. I understand. That's why education is so important. And if you want to go by trial and error, you can do that. You can get there. You may not get there in three to five years, but you're going to get there because it's super hard. A person that knows exactly how to trade may get there in three months to let's say uh, uh, one year if they know exactly what they're doing because you got to get over your the psychology the, the 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 psychological level of it but let me tell you this once you know your risk tolerance because hey i could have like for example a million dollars in my account but how much money am i going to risk per trade you know what i mean like am i going to risk half the account and here's another thing most of the traders that start off with very small accounts, like $5,000, $10,000, sorry about that, um, blow up their accounts. Because this is not a market that is being very generous with traders that are not proficient in trading and that are not really good at applying risk. Okay? So here's my secret. And this is the secret sauce. And I'm here to give it to you. Okay, risk calculator, that's good. All right, so here's the secret sauce. You need to, you are responsible in determining the risk per trade. The risk per trade. You're a day trader, right? You're a day trader. When you're a day trader, you need to have a certain amount allocated per day and per week. Okay, that's how you start trading. So for example, when I first started trading, do you guys think that I knew everything or I knew all this? God, no, <laughs> I didn't. But there's one thing that my mentor insisted on. And before he taught me how to trade, he said, you need to understand risk first. And I'm like, okay. So that's the first thing that I've learned about trading, risk. So that's why it stuck stuck with me because I'm always like before even talking about charts or patterns or strategies or, you know, this trailing or anything else. He talked about risk and how I need how important risk is, because if you don't apply the correct risk, you're going to blow up the account. OK, so I you don't want that, especially I didn't want that because that was like the whole money that I had for my life. Right. That I didn't have any money other than that. So I had to go to work. I got, I had to find another job, right? So I didn't want to go back to work, okay? So he taught me and he said, look, if you have a certain amount of size in your account, look at that, I mean, whatever it is, look at your account size. Look at your account size and look at it very carefully. See how much money you have in your account, right? And if you have, for example, let's say $50,000 in your account, and by the way, with these prop firms that, you know, that are out here today, you could have access to half a million dollars and even a million dollars. Yeah, that's right. So they give you money because if you make it, 
Think about it. It's a no brainer for them. They get 10% or whatever they get, right? So they want, they are, they actually want to, uh, want you to succeed. Okay. They want you to succeed. They're not after you. They want you to succeed because they want the money. So they're very happy when they have, uh, um, clients that they're offering the payouts. That's right. They're very happy. So he taught me this. Look at your account size. And if you have $50,000 in your account, you should never be risking more than 1%. And that 1% is $500 per trade. Now imagine this, you have a trading day, choppy, crazy, the way it was today, right? Uh, right ahead of the quadruple rich option expiration. What do you do? You apply your 1% risk, but do you take only one trade? No, no. You allow yourself to take multiple trades between three and five. For example, I allow myself to take five trades in a day, but do I take five trades a day? No. Well, maybe sometimes once in a blue moon, but definitely not every single day. Most of the days I take one trade, maybe two trades and done because every single time and listen closely, every single time you click, click, Every single time your mouse does buy or sell, you add more risk. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You add more risk. For example, if you had a trade that worked out and you're happy and you have budgeted for the trade and you made money, let's say you made one and a half hour or two hours or three hours in a trade, you made your goal for today. Think about it. Think about it. You, If you risk $500, you just made a thousand or you just made 1500. Okay. If, and for example, and that is not a good scenario where you have three R's, but for example, if you have a trade where you only make one R because it happens in shopping markets, you're lucky to get one R. One R is really bad. Okay. And this is a kind of like the norm in shopping markets. You're happy that you've made that R you're happy that, or you're happy that you broke even, right? Because you didn't lose on a day where you don't have a lot of potential for the trades. And by the way, guys, I will answer all the questions. If you guys have any questions, I will answer all the questions at the end of the presentation. So bottom line is that when you're, if your goal is to make just one R, like risk 500 to make 500, that is not a good idea. That's why when you enter a setup, the difference between the entry and the stop, so you set your entry, you set your stop, the difference between the entry and your stop, that has a certain amount of points, right? So for example, it has, I don't know, 10 points, right? Let's say you're trading the Dow and it has 10 points. So that means that if you're trading the Dow, for example, with, let's say with one contract, right? That is what, 50 dollars right fifty dollars what if i have and i can risk five hundred dollars can you guys type it in here how many contracts of the dow i can get exactly i could get 10 contracts because i'm not risking one contract i'm risking my position size so uh, therefore i could get 10 contracts okay so when you make money, let's say the, the trade moves two hours or even one and a half hour, one and a half hour is perfect. Two hours is good. Three hours is amazing. Okay. So when you make money and let's say you make two hours and you make three hours, that's a thousand dollars or $1,500. That's good. Right. What happened? This is the, the downside of uneducated traders especially in the futures market because in the stock market is like everybody knows but in the futures market it's like oh my god it's like somebody brainwashed someone right and i have a really i have a pretty good feeling who actually introduced this concept of let's trade with one contract or let's trade with standard contracts your broker that's right that is where the losses are coming from because hey the more trading you do the more commissions you pay the more money you're getting your broker rich right exactly
quickly. All right, you stop out, broker wins. You make money, broker wins because they love to make money off of their commissions. Who do you think invented the scalping theory? Brokers. Mm, yeah, that's very interesting. Brokers because brokers love to see you broke, right? Brokers love to see you broke. They don't want you to make money. Okay, sorry. All right. Who cares, right? You're just account, an account number for them. So put this into perspective, right? So when you trade, number one thing, when you trade, you need to position size, right? Position size, right? Depending on the difference between the entry and the stop, if you're going long, see what the difference is. And those number of points, you need to position size with them. I'm going to show you at the very end. Okay. So traders should never risk more than one to 3% per trade. Even now, I only trade 1%. Because if I lose on five trades in a day, I'm down 5%. Okay? Because I budgeted. I have had days where I lost on five trades. I bet. Not all of my trades are winning trades. But the majority, like 70% of my trades, 80% of my, uh, my trades are winning trades. But they're not all winners. They're, it is impossible to have a 100% win ratio. And I know that I have heard. And by the way, guys, are you guys on Instagram? Are you guys on Facebook? Are you guys on TikTok? Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, there are people out there that are. I, I'm like shocked and I'm like, oh my gosh, how can, how, how can, how can we stop these people from brainwashing other people? There was like one, there was this young lady uh, the other day that I, I listened. I'm like, oh my God, this cannot be possible. And she was showing uh, like an Excel sheet. Yeah, it is crazy. She was showing an Excel sheet, how you make a hundred dollars in a day. And the next day you make $200 and therefore you have $300 and then you make another $100 and then you have 500. It's like, oh my God, compounding. I'm like, you. how can you compound in day trading? Like, oh my God, you cannot do that. Oh my God, it, it's just insane. Like, it's just insane. Like the level of insanity. Uh, of course it's a scam. Yeah, it, it was just like, you know what? <laughs> uh for okay so if you guys follow me okay if i find it or in my next presentation my next live presentation i i swear you guys i'm gonna find some of those uh uh some of those um uh some ads i should say and you guys need to see them i mean you guys need to see what's out there and there were people that were like, I'm interested. I'm interested. I'm interested. I'm like, oh my God. And there were like hundreds of people that were interested. And I, it was like mind blowing. Okay. Uh, it, it was like crazy. So there was, okay. So this is one, there's another, no, there are two ladies, one, another one that is doing options and she's also only trading the SPX and she's making like these these returns that are like fifty six thousand twenty five thousand dollars in a day okay in a day but she's not showing like her platform she has like a pnl on the side and then she has a platform and then she has something else on top and there's her face you can't really see anything but it's like oh my god and then she's saying that oh i have a hundred percent win ratio like sign me up <laughs> like guys I, sh I think we should sign up for her like I'm serious anyways and then there's another one's like oh look at the clock guys look at the time it's 7 a.m it's uh, 10 a.m and I already I'm already done for the day uh I've traded the SPX this one too is with the SBS on the SPX wagon I've traded SPX and I made ten thousand dollars they they don't tell you what they do how they do it charts or explain anything it's just mind-boggling okay let's let's continue I just wanted to share with you guys these facts because they're real okay they're real so buyer beware all right so another very important element is deciding how many trades you should take per day. This is very important because I remember we had an open house last year and there was a lady that was in the trading room 
and um we had a trade i remember we had a trade in the dow and back then we had some data come out and the dow had a really wide stop it had about 80 to 100 point stop so she said that she had a two thousand dollar account or twenty five hundred twenty five hundred dollar account or something like that and she took that trade with one full size contract <laughs> Oh my God. Like I couldn't believe it. Like I couldn't believe it. It was like, oh my God, this the, luckily, luckily, uh, you know, the trade worked and <laughs> she made money. She made like a hundred something points, but like, why would you do that? Okay. So she was risking a hundred plus percent, whatever of her, uh, of her capital just to get into a trade. So there are people that are, uh, that have very little money. So be very aware of that one percent rule so she in this case she should have been trading if she has a, a 2500 dollar account 25 dollars per trade okay so based upon the risk that we had in the dow she should she should have uh sit on her hands and not take the trade but anyways yeah steven you're right they're preying on people's desperation <laughs> Oh, I'm telling you guys, like, like a hundred percent, like win ratio, like sign me up. Cause I have losses. <laughs> okay. Like I want to, I, I want to, I want to, uh, look, I want to do that. And she was, she's, she was trading options. She was and options with like a hundred percent win ratio. Oh my God. I've never heard of anything like that. But anyways, so let's get on with it. Uh, I, I promise you guys, you guys are going to be back for a next presentation. If it's going to be for futures or something, I, I have to, or any, anything, we could do like a chat or something and just talk about it and I'll show you. All right. Okay. So he, I want to show you what risk represents. So everybody understands. Okay. <laughs> I love that, William. <laughs> She does have a hundred percent win ratio, by the way. <laughs> I understand her husband does the trading, but she must be the head trader. Anyways, so anybody, so everybody here, do you guys understand what risk is? Do you guys thoroughly understand what risk is? Risk is the difference between the entry and the stop. Entry here, stop here for long positions. Entry here, stop here for short positions. Here in this example, I have a short example. I didn't take the trade, by the way. I'm just showing you the setup. It happened in the afternoon, okay, today. And it happened in NASDAQ. We were talking about NASDAQ today. And I was telling everybody that this, it, th this is really short material, okay, uh, under 920, okay? So once it went under 920, you know, you guys should be, you guys should have watched it, right? And those of you guys, because I see some uh, members from my trading room. And you can see here that it had a one, two, three, four bar pullback. You can see the doji here lined up just below the uh, 200 simple moving average. So it's, you can see here that the chart is sloping, right? So it has a high, lower high, lower high, lower high rate. So it's a downtrend. And also I use very simple moving averages. Okay, so I use the 200 simple moving average, which is this one, the red one right here. I use the 50 simple moving average, the green one. I use the 20 simple moving average, uh, the, uh, which is this one right here, uh, the blue one. And I use the 10 exponential moving average, which is the pink one. Okay, I ran out of colors. Yellow was not an option because you can't see it on chart. All right, and with black, I draw all kinds, <laughs> I draw all kinds of lines. So when the price action is definitely below all the moving averages that I use, in particular, the 10, the 20, and the 50. But in particular, when you want to see a strong trend domination, you want to see it either below, for short, the 10 exponential right here. This is a more rapid moving average. This is a, a moving average that literally gets the price rejected every single time it taps upon it. Or if it's like a simple sloppier trend, you want to see pullbacks to the 20. But very early on today, you notice that the price action has been hovering right here. And this is the 15 minute chart has been hovering below the moving averages, right? And here was the big inflection point as we were heading into 10 o'clock or 1030. We had the big uh, pull to the downside. 
this one was a little rotation here from 10 o'clock all the way to um today was very difficult to trade we we took a trade long uh uh in um uh in nasdaq but that that was pretty much it for for me right uh, i trailed out i i think i made about i don't know about 30 points in it yeah about 30 points in it or 32 points or something like that and i was done so bottom line is that when you see this 10 EMA right here, and when the price action is, uh, is literally going right to it, and when you see that the price is rotating here, right, you could actually take it below this doji low, right? Because that becomes the tippy top of the pivot right here. And this confirms a sell action, right? It's a sell setup, meaning that the price action is coming in, right? So you can see here right off the bat that the 10 EMA creates this roadblock, creates this line in the sand, creates this wall, and the price action goes in it, gets rejected, and goes back down. This is typically what, what trending markets do. And uh, there was another setup that formed. So if you were not very quick on seeing this one, even though 15 minutes, there was a, uh, another one that was setting around, I think it was around 11.45 to 12 o'clock. And this is a, a bear sandwich. Those of you guys, are you guys familiar with bear sandwiches? I'm just highlighting this thing right here. Let me see if I could bring... No, that is the number of points. If you want the, uh, the ticks, it's 30 times two. Uh, I was 30 times four. I'm sorry. 30 times four. That's how many ticks I made. I don't count ticks. I have, I'm only trading points, full points. I'm not going for ticks. Of course. All right. So let me see. Mm. All right. I don't use this as much. <laughs> All right. Let's see what color this is. All right. Let's choose blue. All right. Okay. So you guys, we were talking about this, right? As being the doji right? This is the doji. At this point in time, when the doji is revisiting this 10 exponential moving average, you guys see the pink line right here, right? Matt, this is very, very thin. That's good. All right. When you see it tap into here, right? This is the pink line right here. Okay. This is going to be bullish above, right? So if the price action decides to go higher at this point in time, it's going to go like this. If it shakes out the doji high, all right, this would have been bullish. But because it is trading below and it already put a bearish momentum bar and it's a full throttle, it's almost like a bear win bar, meaning like the bears are winning, right? There's no bulls in here. So they're dominating this domain. For 15 minutes, the bears were there. And if bears are there for 15 minutes, and if they're uh, if they have like a really wide tradable void area because the next three uh, the next support is here this is the support right from prior pivot low this is the support right here so if you're getting a sell set up here it has room to go all the way here okay so that's pretty cool okay let me take this off all right so now you have this bear momentum here now guess what I love this. I love this. Uh, I love this bar because of the 15 minute sell that it could do. But I also love this sandwich. The sandwich proves that as long as the bulls, when they're coming back, because you could see where the bears uh, basically uh, uh, stalled right at this line right here. Right. They stall here. They closed here. They, that's their ultimate low for that 15 minute uh, time frame. We opened. We tackled the prior low here, so we were sitting, we're sitting right here, but the bulls were unable to tackle this high. Do you agree? Do you see the bears? They stalled into the 10 EMA. All right, perfect. So that means that the next bar, meaning the third bar, if it takes out the prior low, let me just erase this so you could you could actually see what's going on. If this bar erases, erases the prior green momentum guess what this right here becomes your entry okay you could actually place your stop above the green bar if you want i however choose the pivot this is the stop right here this is okay so you can see it right here 
So the entry is basically under 14. So you can take it 10, you can take it 12, you can take it 13, anything that is under 14 plus minus three to four points. Okay. So you can take it anywhere below 14. Your stop is going to be above 63. I give about two points for the stop. So my stop, let's say it's 65 right here. And let's say the entry is 12 right here. Uh, would you enter before the bar closes? Never, ever, ever. And here's why. I'm going to tell you exactly why. You have to enter when this red bar trades below the prior bar. That's it. You don't wait for this bar to close. You take it at the trigger below because that is the confirmation that the price is unable to sustain that level and it's going to crash. And you want to be able to, uh, to do that, okay? Uh, let me see if there are any questions about this strategy. Um, oh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, David, I think I understand. I understood the uh, question wrong. So that's why I wanted to go back and reread it. Would you enter before the bar closes? Yes, you enter before this bar closes. Sorry about that. I think I misunderstood. Okay, so you enter before this bar closes. As soon as the, this bar takes out the low of this green bar, you get in. Okay, you get in. So this is 914 right here. That's the exact price from this green bar low. So you take it below. The reason why you need it to take it below is because you want the price action to confirm to you that the price is ready to make a new low. And that is the confirmation of the market. You're always gonna hear, oh, I wanna enter with confirmation. Oh, I wanna do this with confirmation. You hear it on CNBC. Oh, I wanna, I wanna wait for confirmation. This is what they're talking about. So they're talking about when the bar breaks below the prior bar with at least one to two points. All right? Okay. Um, let's say the next question. Uh, okay, Stephen, I would like to ask you: Were you looking at the stocks in the e uh, in the ETFs? That yes, I do look at them. So if I see weakness in the ETF stocks, then yes, you um, that is a major contributor to my to my decision. Yes, I do look at the stocks all the time. <laughs> all right. Uh, and they were, yeah, they were mo mostly bearish. They were pulling back. NVIDIA was pulling back. Everything else was pulling back. Apple, uh, Microsoft, Broadcom, everything was pulling back at the time. There was a little bit more strength in um, um, in s and today. So uh, the financials, were, uh, financials and energy were pretty strong today. Uh, and uh, NASDAQ was a lot weaker today. So this, this was the reason. Okay, this was the reason. So when you're taking this trace, so again, your entries here, again, I put my stop above pivot. That's a personal preference. You can put it right here, but I find that sometimes you get a little bit of a wick higher, you get stopped out, and then the price goes for you lower. You see this pivot right here? This is your target one. This is target one, just like it says here. This is target one right here. And then target two is coming at this point. You guys want to know how I, how I came up with this target at 700? Well, first of all, it's a whole number, okay? The strategy is called the bear sandwich, okay? Do you guys know? Do you guys want to find out? Do you guys want to find out how I came up with 700 out of the blue? <laughs> out of the blue. It's a whole, yeah, it's a whole number, so that's a good thing, right? But let me show you. Okay, hold on a second. As soon as I figure out how to how to exit this tool. Okay. No, hold on. I should be using this uh, drawing tool much. Okay. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Exit. All right. All right. Okay, so let's go NASDAQ. Let's go oh, 15 minutes. All right. It, oh, what the heck happened? Oh my God. What the heck happened? Oh my gosh. I think this is, okay. This may be the wrong contract. Okay. Here it is.
All right. I don't know what happened. Okay, cool. All right, this is it. No, I don't use that, William. Okay, so here's the thing. It's like, okay, so this is my target one. Boom. And I'm like, do I have target two to the left-hand side? I don't. Like, I could squeeze as much as I can. I, I can't see it, right? So where can I see it? Where can I see my target? Well, I have support here, right? Into the 900, so I could draw a line right there. That's going to help me, right? So I have it over there. But where am I coming with this 700 from? Let's go to the daily, okay? Let's go to the daily. All right, do you guys see this high right here, doji? Huh? <laughs> Look at that gorgeous candle. Look at the doji, guys. Do, do you guys see the doji? Remember, doji candles are decision candles. They're gorgeous. Bullish above, bearish below. No thinking. <laughs> no thinking. Don't think. You see a doji, you're like, oh, bullish above, bearish below. All right, so we came right into this right into this area. Do you guys want to know what's going to happen tomorrow? Technically, again, you don't need to know math. You don't need to strategize. You don't need to do like crazy calculations. You don't need to apply like mambo jumbo strategies. Do you guys see the 10 EMA right here? Do you guys see the 10 EMA? Bam. That's your target. So tomorrow, if the price takes out today's low, it's going to get on to this 10 EMA. There's also another level here. Do you see the doji low? Of course you do. Doji low is your next target. Okay, so like, let's zoom it in a little bit here. Let's zoom it in so you guys can see it. So if tomorrow we take out the 950, we're going to the 10 EMA and to the 850. We break the 10 EMA, 10 EMA, we're going back to the doji low, which is 760. <laughs> no algos required. <laughs> no outcomes required what like, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry guys i'm not gonna sell you any kind of shiny indicator <laughs> install it now pay a subscription for it oh my god oh, oh, oh don't get me started with algos <laughs> okay uh i love algos but not these uh, indicators and all that mumbo jumbo all right so if you want to start, do you, do you guys want to start trading, but don't know where to start? Okay. Uh, well, I've been there because like I said, I was doing a lot of research. And by the way, when I, I decided to day trade, um, there weren't a lot of, I mean, there weren't webinars. I had to travel to a seminar. <laughs> okay. All right. What if I told you that trading could be as easy as, and I could guide you, I could be your personal GPS. And I, what's most important is that, um, what's most important, I was reading through questions again, and it's like, David is saying that you need help with entries and exits. These are the, the simplest things. And uh, Dave, uh, David, just pay attention when you get the recordings, Pay attention to what I've explained. That sell set up that force from the doji. The, guys, you only need to know one strategy to make money. Do you think that trading is... And when I hear traders, and I mean the social media traders. <laughs> the social media traders are inventing strategies every single day. It's like, guys, let me tell you, I came up with a new strategy on the... Uh, NASDAQ 100. It's like, wow, I need to see this. Like, sign me up. All right. Guys, trading is easy if you have your personal GPS. But whatever, I, I could guide you. I could guide you from here. This is where I live in Boca Raton, Florida. And I could guide you how to go to my favorite destination in the world, which is Isla Morada. I love it there. I have a place that I go to. And I, I, by the way, I'm in Detroit, Michigan right now because uh, we're here for the summer. Uh, but I'm going to go back here probably September, October, but I'm going to go back there sometime in August because I do have uh, uh, I do have a meeting with some traders in there. Uh, but I can guide you. I can definitely guide you how to get to your exit strategy with profit. And not only that, not only that, but I can teach you how you can have the GPS up here. So you know where the entry is. 
you know where the, where the stop is and you know where the target is. Do, do you guys think that it was easy to find targets? Sorry. Do you guys think it was hard to find targets on that NASDAQ trade? No, it's not. It's not rocket science. Okay. Hey, William. Uh, where's that? Where's St. Joe? Okay. Let me know. Okay. So. All right. How about working for five minutes? <laughs> what if I told you you can work five minutes once once a month? Once a month. Once a month you can work. Oh, got it. Oh, oh, that is beautiful. I absolutely love the west side. I'm on the east side. Okay. I'm to, I'm actually Lake St. Clair is right there. <laughs> yeah. All right, five minutes. Okay, do you guys see what I see here? Okay, do you guys see what I see? I opened the trading room and I told my traders the day before, I, I don't usually trade news, I don't. I trade the effects of news. But the setups were so good the day before and were so good in the morning that I told my traders, you know what, hop in, I'm gonna open the room um, uh, earlier. We usually open the trading room at uh, nine o'clock and I come on the, on the mic around 9.15 because I watch price action, data, news, etc. All right, so I look at a lot of things before I come on the mic and start talking, but um, here it is. Good morning, pre-market watchers into CPI. By the way, this was five minutes before the open. Five minutes before the open. Okay, I lied. It's 10 minute work day. <laughs> Okay, so here's what I said. Why am bullish over 7, 710? S&P bullish, bullish over 5275. NASDAQ bullish over 425. R2I bullish over this. These are the key zones. This is what I, and by the way, here I took a break. Five minutes later, actually 10 minutes later. Okay, no, five minutes later, five minutes later, uh, we were done. This is what I call instant gratification. High risk, but high reward. High risk, why? Because the high risk, it's not that we're applying different risk or we're doing two R risk. I'm always applying 1%, which is my one R, okay? But the, the thing is that it's high risk because it could stop you out immediately. So you're either stopped out in those five minutes or you make a killing. Take a look at this. Literally, this was hundreds of points in the Dow, hundreds hundreds like 300 points five minutes okay but you need to know how to select the news and how to select the setup okay so i said i think i'm done for the day <laughs> okay but i got in it again okay because there were traders that couldn't make it in early they're on the west coast they wake up a little bit late and guess what <laughs> you could take like in this case i only took two trades i took two trades Okay, in this example, but I mean, you can pick and choose. They're all the same. And it's not that every day I'm going to post YMBS, NASDAQ, or Russell. No, sometimes I post only one, sometimes I post two, or in this case, they were all in sync. So just throw a dart, what, whatever you want, whatever you can pick faster, whatever you can get in faster and get it. Okay. All right. So all these trades, all these trades, all these trades we're setting up, they're all worked. But like I said, I have a selection criteria. Not every day you're going to see that I call four trades. Okay. No. For for example, today I only had NASDAQ. Okay. All right. So that's what I picked out of the hat today. But anyways, and then we have the one, two, three, four pullback. Okay. And let's talk about entries because there was a question in here about entries. Okay. And David said that you need help with entries and exits. Perfect. Okay. So let's talk about that. Okay, entries and exits. What is an entry for me? An entry for me is when I see a rotation, right? So I need to see the green bar take out the prior red bar. That would confirm a pivot. So therefore, my stop would be just below the pivot, right? And then my entry would be just above this red bar. In this case, this bar is an inside bar. It's so much more powerful because this plays a bigger role than 
actually a buy setup. A buy setup is when the green bar takes out the prior red bars high, right? And then the bottom of the pivot becomes your stop. This is how you select entries. You don't buy at support and you don't short into resistance. You wait for rotations. Those are the confirmations that we talked about before. So in this case, we're like, wow, okay. So I see what game they're playing. So when you're seeing an inside bar, that means compression. That means price compression. What happens when you compress a spring? Boing, right? It just goes, right? And because it's with a trend, because you have a low, and at the time of the trigger, so this time around, you take the green bar that takes out the prior inside bar high, you place your stop below the low, and you let it run into resistance. And by the way, this is the resistance area at these prior two highs, right? And you can see consolidation, 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 and bam, higher. So we were in this trade as well. I didn't want to get into any other trades, but somehow I ended up in this uh, second trade, uh, second trade again. Okay. All right. Here is another CPI number where I said, good morning team, NASDAQ and ES already trading into all time high. So this was before the market opened. Okay. Uh, YM. Oh, and by the way, this is before 830. So at 830, you get the CPI numbers. These are CPI numbers. Okay, so um, NASDAQ and S&P already trading at all-time highs. Why am bullish over 860 target? Bam, 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 bam. NASDAQ bullish over this number. Bam, 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 bam. CPI numbers in one minute. Caution extreme volatility will hit the tape. FOMC day today. This was last week. Thanks for playing. Five minutes later. Not even five minutes later. Here we go. So remember, this is a chart of the Dow. So in this case, I only chose two indices. And I think I only traded NASDAQ in here uh, because you got to be super quick, you know. Uh, so why I'm bullish over 860, you can see where the 850 is. 860, my entry was right here. The stop was 800. And you can see where it went, right? It went all the way to 150. So anywhere where you see it, like trading above the targets because we had targets all the way to 39,000 and it was still going. You're not going to put an order and say, oh, I'm going to take myself out at 39,000 because that's the target. No, after 39,000, you got to pay attention. This is a five minute chart. Then you watch it on one minute and at the first sign of rotation, you exit. And at this point, I got out, I think it was like 89 or something like that. Let's say 90. Like, and that was 39,090. So it was around here where I got my exit. And here with NASDAQ, you can see here bullish over 280. So you can see where the 280 is. Right. This is this is the entry right here. The stop was 260. Bam. Look at the look at it go. We have targets all the way to 420. It ran into the 460. So anything that was over 420, that is bonus. Pretty cool, right? <laughs> Pretty hard. Okay. Pretty hard. Uh, do I even watch the tape to see uh, if uh, speeding up or slowing down? Absolutely. I watch the one minute chart, one minute chart when you're trading the news. So guys, if you want to trade for a living, no boss, no commute, uh, you don't need customers. Think about if you're working in real estate, right? Think about working in real estate. You have to have a client list, an email list. You got to go out of the house. You got to get dressed. I can sit here literally in my sweats, right? And trade, right? I don't care. <laughs> as long as I have some lip gloss on. All right. So it's just you and your computer. It's basically you're turning your computer. And here's the thing. This phrase right here, turn your, uh, turn your computer into your personal ATM. It's not mine. It's actually my mentor, my mentors. He said, you're going to turn your computer into your personal ATM. And I'm like, sign me up. <laughs> okay. This is the perfect time to learn how to trade your way to financial freedom because uh, you guys need to embrace algorithms and embrace anything that AI has to offer. Uh, and not only for futures, but for stocks as well. Not only for day trading, but for swing trading, for investing as well. The market is a permanent transfer from wealth to novice traders to the astute and educated traders. So the markets are still going to be super hot and volatile in 2024. Why do you think that is? 
because you're still going to have the Russian, the Russia, Ukraine saga. That's going to continue. There are, uh, okay, I'm not going to get into this, <laughs> but there, there's a lot of things that there are a lot of things that are happening in the territories that were occupied by Russia and why everybody wants to push Russia out of there. That's right. I don't know if you guys know, but Ukraine is literally one of the most uh, richest country in the whole Europe. Because that area where Donbass is and all those territories where Russian occupied territories, okay, that is where these rare minerals are at, okay? So the Americans are pumping trillions to get the Russians out of there because those rare minerals are worth hundreds of trillions. So it's worth it. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. So I don't, and by the way, Stephen, I don't look at any order flow software price action. The more you simplify it, and that's for me, you can do whatever you guys feel comfortable with. But for me, it's price action is key. I don't have to look at anything else. My charts are so simple. They just have some simple candlesticks. That's it. Election year. So we're into a full election year right now. The price action is going to get volatile and more volatile as we're getting into election year. You're going to have more and more and more and more opportunities into an election year. Uh, Israel Hamas war still continuing. FOMC raise surprises. Oh my gosh. We thought that there is going to be a change now. No, they're not lowering rates. They're not lowering rates yet. Are they going to lower rates? Is the price action you know, kind of like digesting the rates right now is, I, we don't know. Uh, inflation is still super high. Massive layoffs continue. I don't know if you guys are listening to the media, but yeah, there are pretty much layoffs left and right, right? Uh, energy, I, I don't know about you guys, but the financial system, there are a lot of branches that are closing. A lot of people that are flying out of their position, okay? Uh, is there going to be a recession? Who knows, right? So I just want to show you a snapshot of my um, account because this is a full year and this is a, a recent year that was closed, right? The 2023, I'm going to show you 2024 as well. So basically this is where I started. By the way, for those of you that don't know and not in my trading room, I trade with a $500,000 account. It is my money is not prop, but you can have access to the same amount of money if you want to trade prop. So this is where I started off in January of last year. This is December 31st. As you can see here, it's over 1 million from zero profit to over 1 million profit. You guys want to see more? I'm going to show you this. This is 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024. And if you're interested to see 2020, 2019, 2018, 2017, and so on, you could actually go to our website, scroll at the bottom of the page, of uh of the trading room page and then you're gonna hit the button that is the last button on the page that says view performance you're gonna see all the trades with the entries and the stops and the targets and everything okay so this is just a quick summary by the way this is a tracker this is a track i used to manage money uh william i used to manage money okay i used to trade other people's accounts as well all right not not long ago. So I stopped doing that in uh, 2019. Okay. All right. <clears throat> yeah, we do have a journal. Okay. So as you can see here, th this is the performance for 2024. So position size and grow your account 2x, 3x, or 4x. This is a tracker. And this uh, tracker shows the trades per contract, not through position sizing. Through position sizing is this. So I position size. This is not position sizing. This is just a tracker so you can see how many points we made and so and so index. It's by point. Okay, these are my returns right here, 1.255590. And as you can see, my win ratio is 63.9% for a whole last year. 
So my account size is 500,000. I made these profits last year, 1.255590. So that means that I made 2.5 times my account size. <clears throat> For those of you that don't believe that you could actually make more money trading, uh, trading futures, you could do that in stocks as well. I've done it in stocks as well. But you could grow your account. So think about this. Do you guys know what the return is when you invest your money with a fund manager? With a fund manager. 8% per year. Like that's going like a, like a what? Like a snail. What's slow? Like a sloth. Like a sloth. 7%. Right? Like a sloth. It's barely moving. How about 2Xing your account? Okay. <laughs> All right. So what do you need? What do you need, guys? You need to know what to do. <laughs> you need to know what to do. So it, trading is easy if you know what you need to do. Trading is hard and it sucks if you don't know what to do and if you don't know what it takes. Uh, it requires a lot of discipline. So you need to be very patient very focused and look for high quality entries. Like for example, if you see the price action dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping, you're not jumping in. You're just waiting for the next action in the market. You're either waiting for a pullback or another sell set up, or you're either waiting for a short squeeze. A lot of the traders fail uh, because they think that all you need to do is open an account and just start trading. You know, the click, click, click right? That's it. Okay. But think about it. Doctors, lawyers, pilots, they go to school, right? They go to, they, they go to school either for seven years or five years for three years or two years, whatever. And then they need practice, right? All right. So the most important things of training are rarely discussed. And that thing with the patience, right? The, the market pays you if you have the patience to wait for the setup. If you're eager to jump into the trade just because you're seeing red and you go like, oh my God, I'm going to jump in. Did you know that when I was mentored and uh, my mentorship was very extensive and when I was mentored, for example, to improve my swing trading and to improve my, um, even my day trading, my mentor taught me that, for example, if I'm long, and let's say my the price blew through my stop, and let's say the price is still going down, not to panic, not to exit, but to wait. And uh, I did it with a very small size, then I did it with big size, and I did it with, you know, in different scenarios, different times of the day, because that's, you know, what was required. So I had whole work. And uh, guess what? I was taught, for example, if I'm long, never to get out on red but wait for the price to rotate back. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so um, just wait for the price to rotate. So confidence, conviction, come from knowledge, guys. If you have a burning desire, okay, um, to make money. The question is how badly do you want it, okay? Uh, the education is just your foundation. Um, and from that point on, it's up to you how much effort you put into it in order to hit the ground running. You have to have the discipline to follow the plan, the patience to wait for the opportunity. Focus, no distractions. Guys, I, I'm in my office right now. Like my door is closed. Like I don't have anything here. It, I'm shocked that the phone is here because usually I don't have the phone with me. Uh but it's, it's like, I don't have anybody around. I don't have anybody around, no pets, no nothing. It's just me and my computer. Okay. Um, focus, no distraction and perseverance. And if you're new to the futures market and you're saying like, oh my gosh, what can I trade? Well, there are a lot of things that you can trade, but if you want to trade like I do just in the first hour and done, you're selecting the major indices. Right, you're selecting the Dow, the S and P, Nasdaq. Right, you're trading Russell. You're keeping your eye on the VIX to see what's going on. Right, VIX is the fear factor. Okay, VIX is the fear factor. Um, gold. I have a swing trading gold. 
I have a swing trade in silver. Just call them today. Um, okay. I have a swing trade in oil. Here's a good example with oil. I got oil at 80 bucks a couple of weeks ago. The price started to move down and I'm like, I'm not exiting. I'm not exiting. I saw that there was a trap to push all the weak hands out. Especially when you're swing trading, be very careful with stops. Give them a lot of room. My rule of thumb when you're swing trading, half the risk, double the stop. Right? Half the risk, double the stop. Write this down. Half the risk, double the stop. This is priceless. What I just told you right now. So anyways, it dropped. I added more at 75, added more at 73. My average 76, now it's trading at 81. Right? I didn't stop out. You have to know how to handle it. Okay? Because trading is a rule-based system. It's about finding highest trading, having the patience to wait for them. Find precise execution, just like I showed you with the buy setups, the sell setups, the doji candles, right? The sandwiches. And you have to have really good money management skills. What is a really good money management skill? Knowing how to trail. So first thing in money management is basically knowing your risk. And second, money management, managing your trade. How do you manage your trade? Do you freak out? Because if you freak out, okay, if you freak out, guess what? You're having too much risk on your hands. Trading should be calm. It's, remember, it's 1% mindset. Okay, now we're getting into the meat of things. <laughs> what is the power hour? I promise you guys I'm going to answer all the questions. Uh, at the end of the presentation, what is the power hour? My God, we're so behind. <laughs> Okay, what is the power hour? In day trading, the term power hour refers to periods when trading, when the tra periods from the trading day, when there is typically a big pop or a drop in the market. It's a period of extreme volatility that is hitting the market. And this is coming from the fact that institutions are either closing positions or opening positions. And they do this twice every single day. They do it once in the morning and once in the afternoon. The morning power hour is what I specialize in. I also trade the power hour in the evening. We have strategies for that that we teach, there's a literally a specific strategy that I teach in my course that teaches you how to trade the last 30 minutes of the day, which is crazy. It's bananas. It's so cool. So morning power hour is the immediate time that comes from the open at 930 to 1030. So it's basically at, right after the market opens. Market opens at 930. It's into 1030. During this time, traders react to the overnight news, but most importantly, they react to the data that is coming out at 8.30. CPI numbers, PPI numbers, unemployment claims, non-farm payroll, yada, yada, yada. These are going to impact the open. There are algos that are going to hit stop losses, and then you're going to see the flurring down or... You have institutions that are jumping in, forcing the price down. This is called a forced sell. And then they're buying it right off the oh, right off the bottom and pushing it through the edge. They want to make sure that they clear the area because they want more contracts and they don't have them available at that time. So they're making everybody stopping out because they know where your stops are, in case you didn't know. And... And your broker is selling data to them, just FYI, <laughs> okay? And that's what sometimes in the trading room, when if I see a mark, the market is a little bit thinner, I tell my traders, position size for this stop, but don't put in the hard stop or don't put in the hard trail. The trail is here, but don't advertise it because we don't, we want to, we want to fly under the radar. We want to fly undetected. 
And then there's a power hour, which is called the ramp. Uh, and the power hour at the end of the day, usually between 3.30 and 4 o'clock, but, you know, bottom line is 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock, okay? So why futures? Well, like I said, my accountant said that it's going to make a huge difference, and it did. First of all, sanity. So it's so much easier to trade right now. Oh, my gosh. I could wake up at 8 o'clock or 8.15 or even 8.30, and guess what? <laughs> I'm ready for the day. If I would be day trading stocks right now, I would have to get up at seven o'clock so I could get ready and put in an hour and work an hour of work before the market opens. So this is pretty cool. So um, here's the futures advantage of the buying power. We're going to talk about that next. You got reliable volume, guys. Everything has good volume. Okay, everything has pretty good volume. You're trading major markets. You're trading NASDAQ, Russell, Dow, et cetera. It's an income style of trading, meaning you can day trade it, but it's also a well generated style because you're also swing trading it. And you could also hedge. I don't hedge with futures, but you can do that. Especially institutions do that. I don't, but I don't need to hedge. You know what my mentor, and don't forget, he's a Goldman Sachs guy. Do you want, do you want to know what my mentor said? If you need to hedge, it means that you're admitting you're wrong. You're wrong. Okay. Might as well stop from the trade. Exit. And then get back in. So anyways, you have tick values, different price ranges. You know, um, um, minis, you have minis and micros. Depending on the account size, you have minis and micros that you can trade. Uh, you don't need to use a scanner. I mean, why would you use a scanner for? Do I use a scanner for stocks? You bet. Of course, I use a scanner for stocks. Who can keep track of 6,000 stocks that I have on my list? Okay, so I need a scanner. I don't have an assistant. I need a scanner, a, a trading assistant. Uh, I don't need any special indicators. I don't. You guys saw my chart. They're so clean. I just use a couple of moving averages and that's pretty much it. That's all I need. And price action because I need to see the price action. And once you learn how to trade with price action, you're like never going to go back for anything else. You don't need anything else. You don't need the mumbo jumbo on the charts. Just some candles. That's it. And actionable ideas off of those candles. Nothing easier than that. If it was complicated, I wouldn't be here right now. Literally. There's no pump and dump because there's there are no rumors, right? No market manipulation. Yeah, there is market manipulation, for example, in the sense that you're having hedge funds that are forcing the price lower so they can grab more contracts. Anyways, these are present everywhere and they're not as dramatic as they are in the stock market. Uh, and what I do like the most is the 24 hour trading, right? Because if I want to look at the market right now, because I'm approaching nine o'clock, my favorite time to look at charts then we, I, I could definitely see if I want to trade or not. Uh, so let's talk about future different account sizes. So if you want to day trade stocks, guess what? You need about $25,000 in order to open a day trading account. And guess what? Because of the day trader, day trader pattern rule, you need to have $30,000 in your account or even maybe more because if you open it with 25, if you lose a penny, guess what? Your day trading status out the door. You can't day trade anymore. So you need to have more money where if you open a futures account, you can open it with $5,000. And if you lose, let's say $300 or $800, as long as you have sufficient cash in your account to cover the margin requirements, you can still trade that commodity or index or micro for that account. So let me show you exactly the PDT rule. Uh, let me show you an example. And this is, uh, this is the Qs against the NASDAQ. All right, so this we're talking about buying power now. So as you can see here, okay, this one example, this example is from last year. We did a coaching session, and this example is from last year. So for example, here you can see, okay, that the buying power in effect for the queues to buy 100 shares is about fifteen thousand dollars, right? So that's the buying power in effect, okay? And you need about fifteen thousand dollars. And for example, because this is an afternoon trade, we picked it up here and we wanted to leave it, uh, leave it on into the close because we wanted to capture the power hour at the end. All right, we made about, we generated $300. That's fine, $300, that's perfect. But using approximately the same buying power, in this case, $17,000, 
And with one contract, you can see it right here, we generated $2,400 with the same risk, that 1%, with the same risk. Ta-da! Okay, this is pretty, pretty impressive. Let's say you have a $5,000 account and you don't have money to take one contract, okay? So what you do is you buy one micro. So one micro, buy power and effect, Oh my gosh, it's $1,700. Can you believe it? $1,700, $246 right in your pocket. Okay, pretty cool. Remember how much money hedge funds are making you per year? 7%, 8%, 10% if you're like really lucky. Okay, how about this? In a day, in a day from one o'clock to three o'clock. All right. The, the suits from Wall Street don't want you to see this. That's why they have invented mumbo jumbo rules and mumbo jumbo strategies. And they're coming with all these different things and different, different crazy, crazy patterns and new strategies and all that stuff. They don't want you to see the simple stuff, right? They don't want you to see the simple stuff. This is the spy buying power 20,000, 100 shares, $260. This is SMP. By the way, I was before in SMP, but this is what generated on the day 3600 with uh actually, actually it's like twelve thousand dollars here because there are four contracts divided and four contracts divided by forty six thousand. That's about twelve thousand. Micro SMP with a buying power of eleven hundred dollars, one hundred twenty seven. I don't know, guys, but in my book, this is ten percent right here, ten percent. All right. So remember that the futures market opened close to 24 hours a day. The stock market closes uh, at uh, four o'clock. All right. There are some time frames, but before we get in here, I just, I don't know. Is it okay with you guys if I over deliver today? And if I tell you, what if I share with you my evening strategy? Because it's 835. What if I share? Is it okay with you? If I could over deliver and we could go in even deeper so I can show you, <laughs> so I can show you how to trade you overnight. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool stuff. I love it. I absolutely love it. All right. So we're going to go here. Okay. Uh, do you guys have a favorite index? Do you guys want to type it in? Because I don't want to, you know, have any. Uh, biases towards one or another. Just, just give me an index. Okay, S and P. No, we're talking to futures. Oh, you want William? You want it? Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Stephen was uh, answered the question before you. Okay, so let's do, let's do that. We'll do Bitcoin next time. All right. So let's do a yes. Okay, let's do a yes. <clears throat> and by the way, this is the September contract. All right. Okay. So first, the first thing that I do is I look at the technical chart and this is exactly how long it takes me. Look at the clock, guys. Look at the clock. What is that? It's uh, 836. Uptrend, right? Red bar here, bullish above, bearish below. So I go tap and I go tap here. Good. All right. So this is bullish above, bearish below. Now I know my uh, my strategy. I know the 10 EMA is here. I know that, okay, so I know that if we break below 55.25, we come in to the 5,500. I also know that tomorrow is the quadruple witching option expiration. <laughs> All right, which means that there's gonna be a lot of chop and a lot of blood into the market because they're gonna be out there to whip us. All right, so here we go. We break above the high, we go bullish, we break below below, we're bearish. And if we're bearish, and because of the option expiration tomorrow, the quadruple, uh, I have a feeling that we're either going to tap into 5,100, 5,550, or 50, 55. So we're either going to stay in the middle, because this is what happens on option expiration. The prices get pinned out around whole numbers. That's a fact. All right, so here's what I do. I change the time frame, bam, and I go to the four hour chart. You guys see the levels? You can see the same levels that I had, right? On, uh, on the daily, perfect. All right, so what is my strategy going into uh, the rest of the night? 
okay? I could put a limit order to buy over 55.58. So I could initiate a buy here. All right, I can initiate a buy. I could put my stop right here below the low. Remember, it's an overnight trade, so you have to you have to apply wider stops. All right, and this is the stop right here, just below this low. All right, the bias right here. This tippy top right here that you guys see here, the fifty five eighty eight. Guess what? Guess what? This is going to be my target number one. Target numéro one. <laughs> Okay, target, here it is, target one. All right, but when I go to bed, I'm like, okay, this is the doji. What is the doji? Everybody knows? A doji is an indecision candle. Their indecision is our biggest decision because we're going to be bullish above and bearish below. So what happens in the overnight trading session, I could put a buy, buy limit order here over 58. So I'm going to put it at 60 or 59 and a half. And then I'm, I'm going to place my stop at 24, just a point below this. And I'm going to go back in and I'm going to say, put it hard, hard stop entry. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, entry short. I have the alarm set up because I have to send an email. And then if I don't hear that alert, I'm going to totally forget. All right. So when you hit a buy order, okay, and when you put a hard stop over here, guess what? If the buy order is not filled and the price turns around, this is going to be, uh, the, the price is not going to stop you out because it's not going to get a trigger. And then it's going to trigger your entry short. Understood? So your buy limit order, if the price goes up, you're going to get filled. This becomes your hard stop. If the buy doesn't trigger at the entry price, and if you have it hard in, it's going to trigger as an entry short, and this becomes your stop. Bingo. I don't need an OCO order for today. And then guess what? My target for the short is going to be right here. Target one. Bam. All right, so I have my plan for the overnight. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to wake up and see which one is going to fill. Okay? And from that point on, I'm going to sleep. One of the things that I wanted to mention is that all my overnight trades are going to carry half the risk. So I risk $5,000 on a trade, on every single trade, and I position size. So I want to show you an example of position sizing. So got my green calculator right here. I don't have anything red, by the way. Everything is green because I like green, like everything is green, okay? So let's see what the difference between the entry and the stop is. So the entry is, let's say, 59, and my stop is 24, okay? 24, so that is 35 points. That's a pretty wide stop, but it's an overnight trade. So this trade has the potential to run for at least 12 to 17, 18 hours, even 20 hours, okay? So it's not a day trade. This is something between a day trade and a swing trade, it's an overnight trade. It has a different, it, 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 it's into a different category. So now, based on the 35, you guys see it right here. Okay, so it's 35 point stop. I'm going to go in here. I go, I hope you guys can see the screen. All right, I really hope so. Okay, so I'm going to go here and I'm going to go right here. Okay. And I'm going to go to my calculator because this is what provi we provide to all our clients. And uh, we go here and I say, okay, so here it is. Sorry about that. Okay, so here it is. 35, 30, 40. Okay, I have a stop of 30. I have stop of 40. I'm going to go for 40. And I'm going to go here into the S&P. I could take it with three contracts. Okay, so you can see here that in this trade, Okay, I'm going to buy it, okay, with three contracts. And this way, this is, okay, this is a buy that will, this is a trade that will cost me $5,000, okay? So if, I, I'm sorry, I said half the size, okay? So I'm going to go back in here again, all right? That's going to be $2,500, sorry, okay. So because it's an overnight trade and I don't manage it, okay, you could put partial off. So for example, here at 88, if I get in with three contracts, I could exit two contracts and just stay with one, 
Okay. So at target one in here, slash, take two contract, take profit. Okay. Let's do it. Take profit, two contracts, bam, not one, but two. All right. Take two profits and the rest. Okay. And the rest. Let's see. This is all time high, right? So you're going to go like, oh my gosh, like this is all time high. <laughs> Where else is this going to go? It's going to go to the moon. Where's the next target? Well, there's a simple system. There's a Fibonacci system that shows me that I still have room for a price target of, all, of close to 5,700. That's 5,690. All right. So do you guys remember when we started this analysis on the trade? It was 936. It's, uh, I'm sorry, 836. So it's 44 minus 36, eight minutes. Do you guys see it? In eight minutes, I set up a trade. All I have to do is go on my platform and set up the trade. How easy was that? Guys, let me know in the comments. What do you guys think? <laughs> what do you guys think? Pretty cool, right? I strategized for seven minutes. Seven minutes, that's it. Seven minutes. Pretty cool. All right, let's go back. We still have some stuff. Unfinished business right here. All right, because if trading was easy as reading a book or an indicator, a flashy indicator, oh my, oh, I, oh, I, you know what? We have to do a retreat or something because I could, I have so many stories that I have to, that I, need to tell you you need to hear this because i was an indicator junkie i thought there's a shortcut in trading <laughs> oh you did this last night with the yes oh my gosh douglas awesome and you hit all-time highs that's perfect all right so basically we trade an institutional grade trading system you saw how easy it is the decision is based on what on candlesticks that's it Okay, so that's super cool because what are candlesticks? The psychology, right? It's the psychology behind the action, right? The bulls, the bears, dojis. What is a doji? Doji is a tug of war, right? The bulls are not winning. The bears are not winning. So it's a tug of war. What is a full bull candle? A green candle. A green candle is where greed is at its ultimate peak. It's like accumulation. And what is red? They're freaking out. They're selling, okay? So if you want to trade a stress-free institutional level, we laugh, we have fun when we're trading, right? Okay, why? Be because trading is fun, guys. Put the fun back in trading. All right, so we trade institutional levels. Uh, we have stress-free levels that we act upon. Uh, we manage the risk properly, so we always position size. We only focus on high odds patterns. We have a system that allows us to know where to put the stops where, so we don't get stopped out as often. And it's about putting the puzzle together. The trader that manages to put the puzzle together the fastest is the trader that is going to win. That's, that's the reality, okay? So if you want to start making six and seven figure incomes, it's not hard. It's not hard. I can tell you if you have the tools and if you have somebody that can teach you how to do it and literally walk you through all the trades, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. You need to make decisions and you need to follow somebody that has already achieved what you want to achieve right now. Okay. Be wired for success mentally. And stop your limiting beliefs that you're not good enough, that you don't have what it takes. You can do it. Everybody can do it. Everybody can do it. So the future trading room is an alternative if you already have trading education. And the trading room is designed to take you by the hand and get you in all my personal trades. But if you want to go behind the scenes and you want to learn how it's done so you can be your own independent trader, your own independent thinker, then you need to learn how it's done. And it's not the trading room is not a substitute for trading education. 
You could just coattail and copy some trades, but you are never really going to understand the trades unless you follow long enough. So find out what kind of trader are you? Are you still in the welfare trader trying to find easy way out, but not successful and pinching profits here and there, but losing, you know, more than you actually make? Blaming others for your failures and losses? Or are you the millionaire mindset trader that says, you know what? I'm ready for success. Okay. So we trade every single day with a very highly successful system that is in sync with power moves, the institutional money flow. We're not afraid of algos. I love algos because I know how they move and at what time they strike. And I know how to read the algos when they pop up on the chart. So we basically override any news event, any artificial indicator, dark pools, earnings, et cetera. We have a bunch of reviews. And I think the best review is the one that you get when you join us and when, that you get when you're in the trading room. A lot of traders, before they sign up for our classes, they go like, I want to see what this is about. So they join for one day or they join for one week before they sign up for us with the, with education. And they're convinced, they're sold on the method because they see how easy and effortless it is for me and for the traders in the room. Like Douglas here was posting. He's an amazing trader, guys. He's an amazing trader. I mean, I am so proud of Douglas. He is amazing, okay? So he's an amazing trader. Discover and unlock your own potential because you can get there too. And it's not hard. It's just about rewiring. The best traders that I find that I coached and that I have mentored and have joined are the traders that have never, have never traded before because they don't have with, they don't, they don't come with any bad habits. But anyways, so here are a bunch of reviews. You can see here, uh, we have like five-star reviews. Like, man, there are five full-star reviews. And if you're interested in learning how it's done, we have the Power Income Futures course. This is the most powerful course that we have ever put on the market. And I have never seen, and I have traders that have been trading futures, have taken different courses for futures. And then they come to me and say, and take our course and say, oh my gosh, this is mind blowing. This is my, this is actually the best course on the planet, not because it's made by myself, but because I have poured every single little detail that I had in my head into this course so you can succeed. Now you know through this course, everything that I know, the only thing and the missing link is experience, but we're literally linking that gap in the trading room so you can fast track to a much better performance and start making money on your own. And this program is for you if you're losing money into the market, if you don't have a system that clearly identifies entry points, exit points, if you don't have a process that eliminates emotion, because when you're actually in here, because we're talking about emotion, you, you become emotion, full of emotions when you are risking more than you can take. And when you don't know what to do, what is the next step after the entry, you don't know when to exit. A lot of traders and exit the trades early because they don't know they don't have an exit system. And if you lack confidence, this course is literally going to change your life. And um, this course has everything and will teach you everything from A to Z. It's the most powerful day trading. Uh, it, it, it actually teaches you the most powerful day trading chart patterns and how to exploit them for above average gains. And I'm not joking. And very simple strategies. Now, you have the strategy. You guys are going to receive the recording tomorrow. And you have the strategy that I showed you tonight. Uh, for the overnight trade and what to expect tomorrow, even on an option expiration day. Please take a look at that and revisit the chart tomorrow at the end of the day and see where it closed. We're going to teach you the six major disciplines for every single trade. 
And listen to me, this course is designed for futures, but it could be applicable for any asset on the planet. Whether you want to day trade stocks, you, this serves as a day trading for stocks course. If you want to day trade options, if you want to day, if you want to swing trade, I will teach you in the trading room because we talk a lot about swing trading in the swing uh, in the trading room. I will teach you what you need to do in order to take this knowledge and swing trade. Okay. I'm going to teach you multi time frame alignment because without multi time frame alignment, you won't be able to see what's happening outside of your spectrum, outside of your, uh, let's say of your window, let's say a five minute or a two minute or a one minute. We're going to teach you the market tempo. Do you guys know that the market has a certain rhythm when it goes up or when it goes down or when it goes up again? It's timed. And these times rarely change. So um, there are news events that are um, interfering with these movements at times, but they happen maybe once a year or maybe twice a year. 99% of the time, the market tempo remains the same. So you don't waste your money and you don't waste your time. You know exactly when the trigger points are. You're not going to find this anywhere on the internet, but I have designed trigger times for the market and they're applicable for the stock market and for the futures market. So if you want to trade stocks with confidence, if you want to trade futures with confidence, day trade them with confidence, these are the times. We're going to teach you exactly when to do that. We're going to teach you how to maximize um, your timing using key moving averages and other powerful indicators that are free and very easy to apply and very easy to read and very easy to work with how to maximize gains and minimize your losses using proper money management techniques that's as easy to use. Um, market timing, like I said, when to buy and when to sell, precise locations. I'm also going to give you the best kept secret of institutional traders. And these are timings when institutions are legging, and, and, and not only timing, but also locations where institutions by algos are jumping in or jumping out of trades. This is going to be like amazing. So not only that we teach you when, where, what, we teach you exact risk man money management. We teach you advanced technical analysis. We teach you everything from A to Z, from trading psychology to uh, candlesticks, to charting, to everything, to patterns, to strategies, everything that is in between. You have part of the curriculum on our website. I'm going to show you where to go to see that. So learning how to trade is not inexpensive and can be a good chunk of change. But compared to the losses that you can make by the mistakes that can occur in trading, oh my God, it's fully worth it. Now, literally now, you can take a trade and make the cost of the course in one trade. I'm not kidding you. Invest in your future and invest in your education. Trial and error is fine, but do you have the time? When I started trading, I put education first. Because I understood that if I have a good, solid education, I failure is not going to be an option. And it wasn't an option. Because the more you know about trading, the better it is. And that's not analysis paralysis. That is literally, I try to find a person that would teach me how to get there from point A to point, uh, to point Z fast collapsing time frames. I didn't have five years. I didn't have a five-year emergency fund. I couldn't dabble 10 years in like unknown. I needed money now. So I invested in my education so I could get there fast. So I could start my, start my money journey. And if you want to learn how to trade and find winning trades, roll up your sleeves, everybody, because I can teach you how to trade successfully. Because trading is a lot like uh, driving. Trading is learning how to drive. Uh, it could be overwhelming at first because you have to keep tap of you have to keep track of your gas so you don't right so you don't accelerate too much and crash in the person in front of you, right? You have to keep track of the brakes, the mirrors, right? Even when you get into the car, put on your seatbelt. 
That's your money management, right? It protects you. It keeps you, right? In case of a crash, it keeps you like airbags and such. But, and once you get used to it all, right? Like when you, when you get in the car the first time, you know, when you're taking your driver's education thing, right? What do you do? You like mirrors, right? <laughs> mirrors. Okay. Do I see everything? Okay. Hands on wheel. <clears throat> all right. Here's the brake. Here's the gas. But now do you get in the car and go like, okay, I got to have a checklist. Okay. Do I have my seat built on? Do I, did I adjust my mirror? Do it? No, it's instinctive. And the same thing with the market. You know, you have to keep track of your entry. That's your gas pedal, your stop. So you don't crash, right? Market condition, right? Market condition and take profits to stop out. And once you get used to it all, it becomes instinctive. No texting. Exactly. Exactly. See, exactly. That's complete focus. That's complete focus, right? <laughs> anyways, this is so annoying because it's been like digging off. Uh, anyways, um, so like I said, if you want to jump on board, okay, so we have, we, we can, uh, we're starting the enrollment process for the on-demand course. What this means is that you're going to have access now. So if you sign up for the course, Okay, you're going to sign up right now. You're going to get access now. Okay, so now in a few minutes after we receive your registration, we're going to set you up and we're going to send you everything you need to have for your trading journey. So we're going to send you all the recordings. We're going to send you the manual. We're going to send you everything. We have been voted by Benzinga, which is the authority, right? Uh, if you guys haven't heard of Benzinga, Google it voted best industry for financial literacy i even have like uh if you see it right there okay let's see where my finger is pointing right there this is it right this is from them uh this is number one uh, the award right we're number one in financial literacy and services and education okay you get one month access in the trading room if you want you could go right here is tradeoutloud.com let me just type it in here all right. Oops, sorry. Uh, that's the wrong one. Flash futures. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> yeah, Benzinga. So I use it every day. <laughs> I love Benzinga. All right. So. If you want to start it out, if you want to start out with us, this is it. And then you're going to be in the trading room with us. Plus, but wait, there's more. Okay. And this is what I love about it. All right. So you get, you sign up for the course. We're going to instantly send you the recordings. We're going to send you uh, the manual. Plus you're going to have three coaching sessions. And you're going to have one coaching session that is going to be in July one that is going to be end of September and one that is going to be uh, beginning of December. And this is to accelerate you. It's going to accelerate your trading. And this is where I share tips and tricks and nitty gritty things that, uh, that are going to come with the different market environments at the time. So what are you going to get? Basically, number one, you're going to get lifetime access to the power income course live. So when we do the live one, we still haven't decided on the date yet, but it's going to be very, very soon. When we do the live course, you guys are going to get invited more. So you're going to be invited to all the retakes and you're going to have all the retakes, recordings and manuals and every single update that we do the manual because we update them. And we upgrade them every single time. When I first started this course, uh, we put together about 250 pages. Guess what? Now it's over 650 pages of trading education. This is insane. You won't need another book ever again because this manual actually equivalents to probably 57 books. Uh, and you're not going to find the information from the, from any book in this manual because everybody that is writing a manual about trading, they're making money off royalties from the book because they cannot trade. 
I trade, so I make money from trading. So that's why I'm doing the course for you because I'm showing you, I'm teaching you how to trade and then I trade with you. So one of the most important things that I forgot to tell you is that when you trade, you basically follow me. So you follow my train of thought and you take my trade. So it's not that I teach you how to fish and I send you fishing. It's like, I teach you how to fish. I catch the fish for you. And then I cook it for you, serve it, serve it to you on a silver platter. So therefore, the next time when you're going to find a similar trade, then you're going to know how to fish. You're going to catch the fish and you're going to cook it yourself. So it's a no brainer. You're also going to have access to the manual, which has over 650 pages of education. You have unlimited live retakes. So forever, every single time we're going to do a course, a live course, which we do about four or five a year, you're going to have access to it. You're also getting one month access to the Futures Trading Room while we hold your hands through the trades. We teach you how to be successful and earn while you learn. I'm going to be calling the trades with entries, stops, targets, and I'm going to be trailing the trade for you. So you're not going to be alone in the trade for one split second. Everything's going to be on the bike. It's going to be posted in the room. It's going to be super, super interactive. You also have access to a private Twitter feed. If there's Change, there are changes in the overnight market. And if we're in a swing trade, you're going to find out the changes right there. So you're not going to be left alone. I have alerts. So when my alert hits, I'm going to go to our Twitter, let's say the X feed, and I'm going to alert you on the certain market condition, especially during election, right? It's crazy. But especially now that we are in gold swing, we're in silver swing, we're in SLV, right? Uh, because some people may not want to do the silver futures. So I give another alternative with SLV. We're in uh, oil swing. So we have a bunch of swing trades. And as you know, it's nine o'clock. And then, you know, you're going to have a lot of movement into the market, especially as you're going into quad expiration. So yeah, you're, there is going to be a lot of action. You're going to get platform layout. What happens is when you start trading, there are so many unknowns. And you go like, oh my gosh, what is the platform layout? I mean, okay, so I'm sign up, let's say with Schwab. What do I do now? I mean, do I use their layout? Do I use a different layout? Do I try to reinvent the wheel? Do, what do I do? I'm going to give you a platform layout that was taught to me by my mentor. And my mentor actually is trading off a similar platform, a similar layout. So I'm going to give that for you because this way you're going to see the trades, right? Because nobody teaches you how to have a platform layout, how to do, how to have a winning platform layout. So when you look at a chart, you instantly see uh, the trade, and then you instantly see the setup because that's really important. You're also going to get student support via phone or email or Zoom or Skype with everything. So if you have any questions after the class, I'm here. I can help you. What happens if you buy a book from Amazon or if you get a DVD or if you get an online course? You get the course. And if you're asking a question, you're going to get support or you're going to get some Zen desk or whatever it is with somebody that hasn't traded in their life. They were there to just to answer some questions about how to uh, where to find the next uh, the next course or something like that. No. So we're going to teach you everything. So everything from A to Z, we're going to provide you with the risk sheet. So you know how to position size. So it's definitely every single thing. So annoying. Anyways. So the total value of the package, if we start adding it, it's over 30,000. We're actually providing you this course, which is A to Z forever. So it's basically, you're going to be joining the Trade All Out family. You're going to have access to me. You're going to have access to everybody that is in the room. And there's some really amazing traders that have been with me for years. And they're really, really good. By the way, in the trading room and this course, uh, we had uh, we had hedge funds that took the course. We had uh, money managers that took my course. We had um, financial advisors, so many financial advisors that took my course and they're in the trading room. We could actually talk to them and interact to them, with them. Uh, and if you break it down, it's actually $16 per day. $16 a day. So how many, how many times have you lost $16 in a day trading? Look at your account side, look at your account right now. And if your account is red, because you got to do a reality check, it's the middle of the year, right? And if your account is not dark green or in the black, as they say, it's time to make a change. And $16 a day, it's exactly a little coffee right here. 
with a little muffin or whatever it is. So this is exactly $16 a day. How many times have you gone grocery shopping and said, hey, I'm going for milk and I'm going to get some bagels or whatever. And you find out that, at, you know, at the end of at the end of your trip, your cart is full of things that you really didn't need. That is far more than $16. Uh, $16. And you have people here to attest that this is the only place where you literally learn how to trade like a pro and literally earn as you um, as you trade with us every single day. All right. So if you want to start trading with us, the link is right here. It's tradeallow.com for slash futures. And now I am going to answer some questions. <laughs> <laughs> David, I can't believe it. If I hear my phone going ding, ding, ding one more time, I'm just going to throw it out the window. All right. So let's see here. I'm going to answer some questions right now. So bear with me. I'm just going to. All right. Let's see where the questions are. Hmm. Where's my chat box? Okay. Here it is. Hold on just one minute. All right, here it is. All right, got to scroll. Maybe I should do top down. Uh, maybe I should do, uh, yeah. Uh, all right. Um, all right, David has a really good question. Okay, did you have to modify your trading a bit due to the choppy markets over the past several months. It doesn't seem easy to find a trend. I agree with you. It's not very easy to find a trend, but there's a trend. If there's a trend out there, you're going to find it. And uh, believe me, the, the uptrend is still intact. And we uh, what kept us safe is the fact that we have uh, done, uh, and we do this twice a year. In fact, we're due to... Um, have the next analysis next week. And we're going to do it with our clients in the trading room. Uh, what, what we do is a six month analysis and forecast. And when we did the last forecast, and by the way, the last forecast is available uh, for all our clients. It's in the, uh, into the performance portfolio sheet. And we did it on January 4th or 5th. And we said that the Dow uh, is going by June 15th, it's going to be at 19,000 or above 19,000. And that is a measured move. So we use technicals in order to determine that. I agree there are choppy markets and the choppy markets are determined by sep by different e uh, events that are happening in the market. The month of June is in general one of the worst months to trade because you have the contract roll. Uh, and that creates a few days uh, before and a few days after a lot of volatility. And don't forget that you're, there are two contracts that are being traded. You're trading the June contract and you're trading the September contract. So the volume is split and the volatility is higher on both contracts. Uh, other than that, you have the quadruple witch option expiration, which is tomorrow. And by the way, because we're speaking about this, I just want to share. Oh, I don't have it here anymore. Uh let me see if I could get it back. Just give me one second. See if I can find it here. Okay, I still have it. Hold on, just bear with me. I want to share it because I'm going to share charts. <clears throat> the chart back on. Ta-da. Here it is. Okay, cool. All right, so you guys can see it right now, right? Okay. All right, so let's go to, let's say for example here, remove, let's remove the app notations. This is still a super trend. And we have elements, David, that, has, that are pointing us in uh, staying long. So for example, as long as the price is trading above the 10 EMA, uh, we are going to be bullish. So we have been bullish. And by the way, in the stock swing trader program, we have a killer trade in the spies uh, that we have just exited, but killer trade in the spies that was from here, from the uh, end of March and all the way we just trailed out. So we we took advantage of, of this incredible move, which was about three weeks. Uh, so as long as the price action, to answer your questions, question like briefly, uh, as long as the price action is trading above the 10 exponential moving average, and as long as you have the beautiful fanning out of the three MAs here, the 10, the 20, and the 50, 
you're going to think long. Uh, it's much easier not to think short and intraday, look for pullbacks and buy pullbacks as long as the as long as the price is trading above the 10 EMA on smaller time frames. So always go with a larger time frame, analyze the larger time frame before you get into uh into the smaller time frame. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So intraday, uh, basically, you're gonna uh, intraday. You're uh, you're gonna wait for pullbacks. Uh, that you're gonna. It's it's the it's the patience thing that I have been talking about. All right. The next question. Let's see here. Okay. So guide yourself by higher time frames. Four hour daily, David. And as long as the price is above the MA, stay long and look for pullbacks. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Jason. Uh, Jeff, is the course for those uh, that can, uh, on, can only look at the markets in the evening, cannot attend uh, the training room in the morning because of the day job? Absolutely. What I have just showed you, right, uh, you know, with the, the trade, in the S&P, the plotting for the S&P for the overnight trade, we teach it in the course. So you're going to be able to act on these specific. And by the way, you're actually going to probably make more money because in swing trading, you're always going to make a lot, a lot more money. Okay, there I said it. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we do teach uh, strategies. We teach overnight trading strategies and we teach the strategies that you need to tackle in the overnight as well. And at what time? I mean, I mean, you saw that it takes seven minutes to determine a trade. All right. Uh, David, also um, for smaller accounts, 25K, do you recommend a trading futures options uh, or just micros? No options. No, no, no. No options. No. <laughs> uh, just uh, a position size. Uh, for 25,000K, you have a risk size of... Uh, $250 per trade. Uh, depending on the size, you could even go in with a full size contract once in a while once when the volatility is subsided. 25000 is a really good, uh, good amount of money to start trading. Uh, ju just position size. Um, Steven, I would like to focus on day trading, especially in the morning session. I was wondering if we could all go over uh, using prop firm funding. There are several, if you guys, I could send you some links. There are several options uh, that you can use for prop trading that give you access to uh, bigger funding, uh, which is amazing because ultimately this is, you know, this is what it's all about to have access to. It's easier to make money with, uh, it's easier to make money with a lot of money. No doubt about it. Uh, I know how it is because I started relatively smaller not very small, but smaller. So uh, I I face challenges, but you get there with a lot of uh, a lot of discipline and with that one percent rule. That one percent rule never risks more than that. Um, in the prop world, there are I have a lot of traders in my trading room that use the top step trader. I can send you the link. I think I have some discounts available with that. I'm not really sure, but I can send you the link, including along with the recordings if you guys want. Uh, we also offer funding for so we have our own funding. However, we we uh, with us, you don't get to trade futures, but you get to trade future CFDs. So what that is, is contract for difference because our broker is in Australia and it's not here because if it was here, I don't know, there was like this, uh, this thing with the fees and stuff. So with us, you don't get to trade uh, futures like you see them in here, but you trade future CFDs, the chart patterns are the same, the price is gonna be different. For example, to understand what a future CFD chart is, if you go to investing.com and if you look at an S&P 500 futures chart, that is what you're gonna see. You're gonna see that there's a price difference between this one, the price that the futures contract U.S. futures contract is at right now, and there's a small a small difference, but the uh, the uh, the chart says, uh, the chart pricing is absolutely the same. Uh, I have some other traders that are using, I think Apex or something like that. So I have a lot of traders in the room. 
For example, um, there is, I think, Linda in the trading room. She's trading like five Apex uh, accounts or something like that. She's doing really, really well. She's doing really well. Um, and she's, uh, she's getting a lot of paychecks from them. Okay. Let's see what other contracts, uh, what other questions. <laughs> All right. Oh, Francie, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for saying that the room is worth it. Douglas is saying best investment. Thank you so much, guys. Welfare trader Barbara. I know it's true. Like, don't be too cheap to invest in yourself. So, this course is literally the Hermes of trading. Okay. All right. I think I've answered. If I haven't answered your question, can you please copy it and paste it or just retype it? Uh, okay, I think I covered all the questions. Okay, cool. All right. All right, guys. So this is it for tonight. Thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate you guys. I can't wait to see you guys uh, into the course. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to email us at info at tradeoutloud.com. So thank you so much, everybody. Um, all right. So more, oh, okay. One more question. Are you allowing yourself to add size if the trade is in your favor? Uh, or if the limit, or is the limit just 1% uh, per stock or contract? Michael, that is a great question. <clears throat> it's a little bit complex, okay? But I'm going to try to explain it as best as I could right now. So if I have a trade, so for example, let's say I'm entering the S&P long, and at some point in time, let's say I'm in the money, so let's say I'm up like, seven points or 10 points. And at that point in time, let's say I want to sell some, right? Maybe I want to sell some. I could sell some into the highs if I had a target. And then on the next pullback, if I have a setup, I can add the, uh, I can either add what I sold or I can risk another R if you're trading a power trend. Never add in, cho uh, add in choppy markets. Always add in super powerful trends uh, if the price is going up or if the price is going down. But just follow power trends like off of that 10 EMA to the upside or to the downside. Remember that the 10 exponential moving average is going to serve as support as the price is moving higher, and it's going to serve as resistance as the price is moving lower. So it's going to be a rejection spot uh, if the price is going lower, and it's going to be a pop-up spot if the price is going higher. The second thing that I wanted to share is that my trade in oil. In oil, I had a stop based on which I have position sized. However, I didn't want to take my stop because I literally knew that that was a really substantial support zone. And with any support zone that you have in the market, the institutions typically want to come in, clear the area, and then jump back on board. So what I did is I said, hey, this is a swing trade for me. I'm going to start it up. And I started it with 1%. Okay. Now I had a I had a stop based on which I positioned size that 1%, but I didn't put it hard on my platform. And I said from the get-go, if the price action is going to test my support zone, if it's going to penetrate below the support zone, it's going to dig deep into it. I had two other support zones underneath. So what I was going to do is I was going to add. So what I did is, at, instead of stopping out, the price went lower. At the next rotational point that I had, I added one more R because my 1% is one R. I have added one more here. And at the last rotation, which was, let's say, this is my first entry. This is my second, right? This was my third, third rotation. 
I added some more in here. And therefore, what this price did for me, so I'm engaged with three R's. Remember that many times into my trading, I barely use five R's every single day. I barely use five R's. So for example, today, I was risking one R. I made a little over one R in a trade. I didn't want to take another trade because tomorrow is quadruple reaching option expiration and it's a total baloney in the market. So I'm like, I'm not going to take another trade. So I had four R's remaining. And I often have four hours here, four hours from yesterday, four hours from the day before. So my R's are just like accumulating. Plus I'm sitting on profits every single month. So for me, it made sense to risk on two more, uh, to, to add on two spots, even though I was underwater, okay? So that doesn't mean that I'm trying to, uh, to catch a falling knife. My decision was based on the fact that we have, uh, we have three and actually four other levels of support that I was willing to work the trade out. It's called working the trade out. Uh, in fact, I really didn't want to share this with you because you needed to like, um, you know, understand a little bit more about how we trade and, you know, the system that we trade. But I want to make you guys understand. And I'm using hard stops when I'm day trading. OK, I don't advertise them all the time, meaning like I'm putting my entry. I know exactly where my stop is. And if the price starts moving, I'm putting in my hard stop immediately. But hard stops are the worst enemy and are the biggest scam in trading. They were invented by brokers for them to make money. So when I'm swing trading, I'm never putting in a hard stop, but I'm working the trade out because this is how I was taught. And we also teach this in our course and <laughs> we teach this in our course uh, and it's called, um, <sighs> I'm very tired right now. <laughs> uh, it's called, uh, hold on a second. Um, ah, gosh, where is it? Uh, let me see if I can find it. It's something with damage. Hold on just one second. I'm going to show it to you. All right. No, not this one. Um, we actually teach it in the 10 day course. And all right, hold on a second. Because I'm going to show you the exact chapter. Gosh, I can't believe I can't remember it. Okay, hold on a second. Can't remember it. Really tired. Damage control. <laughs> Here we go. I didn't find it, but uh, it's damage control. Where is it? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> just give me one second. Okay, I'm just going to show you. So we do have a... Um, all right, here it is. Uh, let me see if I can share this with you guys. Uh, and by the way, thank you so much for being here for such a long time. All right, let me show you what we're going to teach here. Uh, but this is for our 10-day course. This is not for the five-day. The shakeouts, exactly, when the shakeouts. So uh, what, you kind of have a feeling when they're coming because there's a solid line. And if, for example, the price of the stock or the index or the bonds or the commodity have been, you know, basing for two weeks or three weeks or more, uh, there's going to be a shakeout. Okay. All right, so let's see, uh, share screen, where is it? Okay, share, share, share. Okay, here it is, okay. All right, so I uh, just wanna share it with you here. Oops, sorry. Okay, here it is. So um, this is called damage control, okay? This is what we teach in the 10 day where we uh, take you like a step further so if you're very new to trading, if you this is the accelerate program, like if you want to jumpstart like rocket ship, okay. So this is what we teach you, like scaling into trades, right? Profit stacking, and this is this is the combination. Michael, you asked this. Your question was a combination of scaling and profit stacking, me, meaning uh, pyramid trading. And so this is the damage control that we also teach um, into the ten day. Okay, this is day two damage control. So damage control is when the price action breaks through your stop and you're ready. Like, for example, we've done this many, many times in the trading room. I ask traders, just give me a, when, when there's literally nothing going on in the market. And I tell traders, do you want to play a game? 
It's like, yeah, okay. So let's play a game. You give me, you give me either a stock or um uh or an index or a bond or bonds or commodities or whatever, and you tell me long or short. And it doesn't matter because if it goes against me, I'm going to get out of the trade uh, positive because I know how to work the trade out. So it's very easy for me to get out of a losing trade. Okay. But you need a little bit of size and you need to know how to work it out. And it's not impossible. All right. So thanks so much, everybody. Any other questions? Uh, the course is $5,999. I'm going to send you guys the link to the course and the recording from this uh, uh, workshop um power class master class whatever you want to call it webinar okay uh, i'm gonna send you all the links and everything that you guys need uh all right so thanks so much for sticking around everybody it's been two and a half hours thanks so much i'll see you have a great night everybody have a great weekend tomorrow quadruple witch option expiration be very careful if you want to trade use half the size or don't trade at all take the day off and i'll see you back in class thanks so much everybody Love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for giving me your time. It's the most precious commodity. Okay. So thank you so much, everybody. Bye.